Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Martha's Vineyard premiere of the Space Race. Uh, I first want to thank the festival for presenting our film, our great partners at National Geographic, uh, Kennedy Marshall, and all of our producers who work to bring this most important story to light. I'm a big fan of Frederick Douglass and how he used the photographic image. You know, he was the most photographed man of his time because he understood the importance of representation and using our visual stories to make certain that our histories are not forgotten. And that's the journey that we're going to go on in this film. Um, so, are you ready to go to space? Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to make sure that you're all strapped into your seats because when the lights dim down in this movie theater, um, it's going to transform into a rocket ship and it's going to take you all to space. You're going to be traveling through the vacuum of space at 17,000 miles an hour into the unknown. But fear not because you're going to be led by a group of extraordinary astronauts. And please, after the film, stay with us because you're going to get to meet some of them. So thank you very much and hope you enjoy the film. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl McNair. Okay. Wasn't that a great show? Great film. All right. Until such time they tell me my next move, let me introduce myself. I'm Carl McNair, and I am the older brother of Dr. Ronald E. McNair. Challenger astronaut. Okay, so um, just a little bit about what I've, I do and what I've done. We started Dr. Ronald E. McNair uh, Foundation as well as the McNair Achievement Programs. And we have over 50,000 McNair scholars out there and some probably in this room right now at 200 universities, 5,000 PhDs, D JDs, and a few other D's I can't even pronounce. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. This is our director, Lisa Cortez, and the other director. All right, let's give him a, give him a hand. Diego Mendoza. And Captain Ed Dwight, let's give a ride. Okay, Joan Higginbottom, Bernard Harris, Bob Satcher, okay. Leland Melvin, and Victor Glover, and our NASA administrator, also known as CEO. We got our good friend. And my fellow South Carolinian, this is my, my fellow South Carolinian, uh, Charles Bolden. <laughs> Charlie, that was one of those breaks. <laughs> okay. I've been coming here for the last 10 years. This was my first opportunity to do this. So, hey, let's get started. And I wanted to direct my first question to Lisa, uh, what was the motivation for bringing this particular documentary out at this time? Representation, notation in American history at a time when there are many factors trying to erase our history and our contributions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think Diego has a, you know, we directed this together, a very interesting perspective about his examination of American history, so. Um, Thank you. Yeah, well, this was a project that Lisa and I were extremely passionate about, and I think that passion is what brought us together. And in my case, I am um, originally from Spain, half Swedish, half Spanish, but I'm becoming American. And I don't know if, uh, 
If you know the process to become American, become a citizen of this country, involves taking an exam, and it has certain questions about American history. And I think, you know, with this project, I, I, I try to make that curricula that m they make you study a little thicker, a little, you know, more in-depth. And one of the things as a foreigner that, um, that I think about is something that Ed Dwight told, told us when we, when we did the interviews with him. He said at one point that when he was about to begin doing his work in sculptures, um, he said, I, I felt that if aliens came down to America and looked around and looked at the monuments, they would think that African Americans were not part of this country or didn't contribute in any way. And that, you know, obviously is very powerful. And I look at myself, I'm literally and figuratively an alien in this country. I'm a legal, permanent resident or alien. That's the status I am. So I, I look at everything as an alien that just landed here and has the opportunity to discover this history and, and realize that it's been unknown. It's not been part of the canon of this country that I'm becoming a, a citizen of. So it was very important for me to learn the truth about what America is. And I think that's part of what you see in this film. Well, well, certainly we heard a lot about civil rights. We heard a lot about uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, and what have you. And we heard a lot about uh, uh, the vision that has taken place over this of the country. I was wondering from each of you, anybody uh, starting with you, Joan. Joan, over in the corner, is the third African-American female to go into space. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> And to what degree has affirmative action helped in your career, whether it's as an astronaut prior to, it must be something there for you, because I'm a proud recipient of affirmative action, and that only meant that they opened a the door so we can get in. When we got in, we had to perform. What about you, Joan? Absolutely, I would say that, um I would say that we're affirmative action, right? Yes, because yes, yes. The Charlie Boldens, the Bernard Harrises, these gentlemen were essentially paved the way for me because I was uh, an engineer at the Kennedy Space Center launching these gentlemen into space. And had it not been for them, I don't know that I would have gone down the path that I went down. Uh, and so my affirmative action is the fact that these gentlemen and ladies, because May flew uh, obviously before I did, as did Stephanie, uh, paved the way for me. And they are the people's whose shoulders that I stand on for me to have been able to accomplish some of the things that I did. So affirmative action to me is what you see sitting here on the stage. And it enables, and it continues to enable those who come behind us to hopefully have a little bit of an easier road than we all had. Mm -hmm. I, I was a, uh, a student at the University of Virginia looking to, to get a job in the chemical industry, because the chemical industry made a lot more money than working at NASA. But there was a black woman from Norfolk State University, a physicist at NASA Langley Research Center, who was given the task of giving jobs to qualified African-American candidates on the spot to come work at NASA. So that was an affirmative action program that met at NASA so many more black scientists and engineers because the way that the system was working, they weren't allowing people to get into those jobs because those jobs were given to friends of friends of friends and the system was kind of rigged to make it so that we could not get access to those jobs. So once we got access and opportunity, and then we as a group and a community, what we did with Victor, we instilled belief in ourselves so that we could rise. And when you have access, opportunity, and belief, you can do anything, anything. So Carl, as you were talking about affirmative action and being a proud recipient of that, uh, so am I. And uh, it's amazing to me when, when I look back at folks who are my age that don't recognize what affirmative action did for us, it opened the door like we talked about, we shouldn't forget that. But when you look at the politics of today now, where there is a, a lot of uh, forces against affirmative action, uh, and realizing that we're, we no longer as black people are gonna have 
uh, people fighting for ourselves, guess what? We have to fight for ourselves, or fighting for us. We have to fight for ourselves. And I believe that the affirmative action of today is our affirmative action. As leaders in our prospective uh, organizations uh, and companies, we need to make sure that we look around and bring each other up. And by the way, as you were talking, I was going, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Anyone want to get down here? Affirmative action as it relates to, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just, uh, I think, uh, just my thoughts on, you know, recent developments are, that um, we've always had to, you know, fight for ourselves. It's, it's really affirmative action came about because of the actions of African Americans. So, um, yeah, it's disappointing, of course, that the Supreme Court, you know, has taken the actions that it has, but it doesn't change um, what we have to do, as Bernard and everybody has alluded to, that we still have to be the ones to bring these kinds of changes about as we always have. And I think, you know, the moment that you saw in the film, which represented that with Victor being on orbit, it's sort of this recognition that, hey, you know, this is what we've always done. Why aren't we doing this? Um, and it was a very powerful moment, I think, for everybody, a very positive moment. And I think it, uh, you know, speaks very well. I think we're probably seeing the same thing with everybody because um, it's because of what everybody in this country, black people in this country have done and continue to do that made it possible for us to be here. And that's what's gonna continue in the future. Uh -huh. okay. I'm gonna start with a quote uh, I'm going to poorly quote, uh, but uh, Dr. Carter Woodson, the second black man to get a PhD from Harvard after W.B. Du Bois. He, he was the editor of the Journal of Negro History, and he started Negro History Week. And he wrote in his own words why he started it. And it was, he says, we, we need not the history of selected races or nations. What we need is the history of the world void of race, religious, and gender bias. And I always like to start there in, in these kinds of discussions. He, he was after the truth. It's 2023, <laughs> we're still chasing the truth. Affirmative action affected my life in a lot of ways. One specific one is I joined the Navy while I was in college in 1998, in January of 1998, through a program called the Baccalaureate Degree Completion Plan. And that was a program the Navy started to try and increase the diversity in the officer ranks. So I was on essentially an ROTC scholarship, a Reserve Officer Training Corps scholarship at a school that did not have that. So they were putting money in my pocket and paying for school for me in, in university. And that obviously had impact on me getting to this point in life. But I also wanna just very quickly just paint a, a little bit broader picture to zoom out and say, what, what, what affirmative action has done is it has changed the conditions. Every generation that it has impacted those people went off and affected multiple people, and my career is the culmination of the work of several people up here on this stage, or the realization, and, and continues to, to pay it forward. And so I think we have to also remember, whether or not it impacted you directly, it affected the conditions that got us a President Barack Obama, a NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, and he is a mentor to me and several of us here, and so it's, it's hard to take away one person's contribution when it has affected the system. And that's the, the, where I want to end is it, it changed a system. And my crew that is going to the moon next year, the middle of 2025, is because, <laughs> thank you, thank you. But let me say it first, okay? Yes, yes, moon, awesome. But the people we're sending to the moon, the first non-American, the first woman, and the first black astronaut, that happened because of decisions made generations prior to us. It wasn't done by us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. That's fine. Okay. We have some young people out there, and certainly have parents, grandparents, 
what would you say through some of your experiences in dealing with society as is, that what would you tell a young person now how to get to where you are right now, uh, what they can do to overcome challenges that you may have overcome? Let's, let's start this side. Um, I wouldn't tell them anything differently than I was told in um, the 1950s when, when I was growing up in South Carolina. I tell people all the time, Everything I ever needed to know about ethics, everything I ever needed to know about anything, uh, I got at my dinner table with my mom and dad, um, you know, talking to my brother and me and telling us that we could do anything we wanted to do. As I pointed out, when I met your brother, he had to remind me of what I had been taught at the dinner table. And I think that's what's important about, you know, I brag about Ed's work since he left the Air Force. And as I watched, as I looked at that incredible uh, work of art that's now on the Capitol grounds in Austin, Texas, yes. how just is that? I mean, you know, <laughs> from slavery to space. Yeah. And, that, and nobody, you know, the damn thing's too big, for one thing, to move. So people will come from around the world and will see that, and that, that one piece of art tells more than we could ever tell in this incredibly uh, diverse group of people here, to be quite honest, age-wise mm -hmm. and experience-wise. So again, I go back and thank Ed all the time for the work that he has done since not being able to do something that he really, really wanted to do. So okay. we owe him a great, a great debt of gratitude. Let's give him a hand right now. So National Geographic uh, brought this together with these great directors here, but Ed Dwight here was the centerpiece of this whole documentary, and we certainly want to pay homage to him. Uh, what's going through your mind, Ed? I see you shake your head a little bit. <laughs> well, when I was approached uh, uh, to do this, uh, there were tons and tons of little podcasts. If you go to YouTube, I didn't realize I had a hundred some entries in YouTube. Uh, and, and so when uh, uh, Diego and his group came along, I, I, I was assured that I was going to have about two minutes uh, in this film presentation. And uh, that was my hope. <laughs> uh, 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 but. Uh, because I've I've been in these movie things where you you you're recording for two or three weeks and you go see it and you got two minutes three minutes in it. so I was confident that, that I wouldn't be embarrassed and have my life exposed <laughs> uh, by these these wonderful people coming into my space and uh, uh, and upon viewing. It, I was, uh, I was floored, and and I just didn't know how they could take the story the way that I had in, in, in visualized the story being by by having a string uh, for, from the beginning of the movie all the way to the end of the movie with that glorious ending. My God, I was like, who the hell is this Ed Dwight guy? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, I, I want to step back to this affirmative action uh, thing for just a hot second. Uh, because uh, I'm, I'm the senior citizen up here uh, of, the, of, of, of what's going on here. And, you know, back in the day, there was no thing called affirmative action when I was growing up. And I was just sitting there listening to the, affirm, uh, you know, the term affirmative action. I never heard that, uh, and 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 obviously I never saw it practiced, and it wasn't a part of my universe. This idea of, of affirmative action, uh, and and finding people, and I had my uh, my you know the people who guided my life and guided my upbringing and stuff, and and my mother was really the mainstay. She was an absolute woman genius who. So who could who could see uh, f from where from 1933 when I was born into the future?
because here's this woman, and I, I don't know where she came from, I don't know what world she came from. She was a college graduate, uh, uh, but we would walk to the Fairfax Airport at night, and we was, they had a long fish pond there. And she would regale me and my older sister with stories about Orville. Oh, where the where the hell did this woman get orbital mechanics, lunar cycles, uh, Milky Way, uh, all the, all these terms that I left home, and then I didn't hear these terms until I was in space training <laughs> when they're, when they're talking about lunar cycles and. Uh, and, and, and all the terms, uh, she didn't use the term over the mechanics, but, 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 the, but that was my interpretation. Uh, and so she ended up being, uh, if there was an affirmative action person in my universe, it, it would have been my mom. Uh, and, and, and she was just there on the spot for every single question that I had about all the things that I had questions about with great answers and positive outcomes. And her whole life was about helping people. And that bled into, into my service thing because I really unwittingly have spent my life trying to serve somebody, some persons uh, for, in the military. Uh, when, when I went to Denver, there was a lack of black housing, so I started building apartments in the black community. Uh, they, there was not a good restaurant, black restaurant in Denver, so I opened up not one restaurant, but five <laughs> restaurants in Denver to serve, uh, serve the black community. And so it's, it's, you know, it's this kind of thing and, and, and how I differ from the idea uh, and how lucky uh, the group here has been you know, to benefit from, from affirmative action for people who kind of didn't know what it was, didn't have a name for it, but they were end up doing things that, al that allowed people to follow. And, and that's my take on this affirmative action idea. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> Let me, we only have a couple of minutes, but I want to speak to Leland here, Leland Melvin. Leland is the only astronaut to ever play in the <laughs> National Football League. It, that's something that you tell your kids about because every other little boy that I speak to in various schools, they're going to be a professional football player, a basketball player, or something. Uh, I think Leland will tell you something about a backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> My mother gave me the age-appropriate non-OSHA certified chemistry set when I was a kid, and I blew the living room up, and my brain got activated to science. So I wanted to be a chemist, I wanted to be a scientist, but I always played sports. My dad, you know, taught me how to play football, basketball, and everything. So I always had this duality of sports, but my love was science. And when he, when he came home and he drove a bread truck into our driveway and said, this is a camper, and I read on the side, I said, Marita Bread and Rolls. I'm like, we're going into the bread business. This ain't a camper, this is a bread truck. <laughs> but over that summer, we repurposed that truck with sweat equity, it's $500, sweat equity. We turned this truck into a recreational vehicle because that was my vision my dad had for his, fam his family escaping out of Lynchburg, Virginia to the Great Smoky Mountains, these places. So re-envisioning things, seeing that anything that you want to do is possible was shown to me by my parents. So my father, like your mom, Georgia Ed, was instrumental in letting me see the things that were possible. So to play football was one thing, to build a bread truck camper, to go if you wanted to go to the NFL, you could, and be a scientist and do these things because it lets us know what is possible as a people. And that was one of the most powerful lessons I got, that you can do or be anything if you just try. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Lisa, there you go. What is the one thing that you would like the audience to take away from your documentary? Uh, well, a couple of things. It's okay. going to be at many festivals. It will be out next year on Nat Geo, Disney Plus. We're creating a curriculum to accompany the film. We are, we are making certain that people know history because as Charlie Bolden says, is if we do not know our history, we do so at our peril. So we are on a mission to, with this film to 
take it around the world, to screen it in Africa, um, and just continue to beat the drum on how incredible we are. And that space is a place that offers opportunity and possibility for us. STEM is so important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, I go on and on. My grandfather was a preacher. Don't, don't give me the mic now. <laughs> 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 but you know this this making this film you know has been life changing and uh, I didn't know it would come out during this time when it's so necessary. Well, let let me fantastic give a round of applause. Yes, I, I'm going to take uh, moderator's privilege by sharing with you that on tomorrow, April 5th, one o'clock, we have a short film on my brother's early life called for the moon. And so come here, right here in the same performance center. And uh, my homeboy, <laughs> I, I knew I had one of those senior moments with you, so. <laughs> so anyway, I, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, okay, fantastic. Thank you all for coming. Martha's Vineyard, African American Film Festival, thank you.